Aerodynamics can manifest itself in spectacular ways, some of which we can incorporate in making aircraft. For example, have a look at this goal from Shinsuke Nakamura against Rangers while he was playing for Celtic in 2008. The spin on the ball, because of the way he kicked it, makes the ball curl and change direction in the air. My apologies to the Rangers fan here for using this example. The curving of the ball trajectory, shown here, is due to the phenomenon known as the Magnus effect, which has been used not only to make aircraft but also ships. Note that an object moving through the air will face pressure. This pressure is concentrated around the stagnation point. A rotating object moving through the air can shift this stagnation point, and this is what the Magnus effect is. This aerodynamic phenomenon can be used to our advantage for making aircraft. By designing cylindrical wings and rotating them through the air, one can achieve lift. Or in other words, a portion of the force that would have otherwise been drag can be converted into lift depending upon the speed of rotation. The first aircraft built to use this effect was by Anton Flettner, and therefore the cylindrical rotating wings are often referred to as Flettner rotors. These rotors were also successfully incorporated in sea vessels. The rotor sails have been reported to generate 5-20% to fuel savings and therefore are seen in some of the sea vessels even today. One reason the Magnus or Flettner rotors aren't found in modern aircraft is because of their inability to provide any lift if the rotor fails to spin, unlike the fixed wing aircraft. However, adding a little complexity in the shape of the Flettner rotor gives a whole new set of advantages, one which VTOL aircraft designers in particular are looking for. And this brings us to the cyclorotor. It is different to the Flettner rotor that is merely a rotating cylinder. In a cyclorotor, instead of a cylinder, there are several spanwise blades that are parallel to the axis of rotation and perpendicular to the direction of fluid motion. The advantage of this type of rotating propulsion device is that it can convert oncoming wind into a force in any direction that is normal to the axis of rotation. In other words, thrust and lift can be generated from the same rotor just by changing the pitch angle of the blades as they rotate. This method of propulsion is nearly as versatile as a flapping wing with a much simpler rotation mechanism. Note that the cyclorotor is different to the fan wing that we have covered in another video. In a fan wing, we have a cross flow fan rotating on top of a fixed wing structure. In a cyclorotor, the thrust vectoring or the manipulation of oncoming air into a force in any required direction can be done by changing the pitch of the blades. Unlike the flattener rotor, the lift force can be generated even without any oncoming wind. And because there is little inertial change experienced when the pitch angle is changed, the thrust vectoring is rapid. An aircraft that uses a cyclorotor is called a cyclogyro or a cyclocopter. Contrary to the popular belief, cyclogyros have been around for a long while. The first cyclogyro was built by the Russian engineer E.B. Sverchkov in 1909. More activity followed in the 1930s and different configurations were tested. The Voigt Schneider cyclorotor system emerged as a result, which found application in marine propulsion. The cyclogyro have had a troubled past because of the unavailability of suitable materials and computational technology. With technological progress and the need for urban air mobility, there's a strong impetus for revisiting this propulsion method. In 2006, a company called IAT21 developed the D-Dallas. The first model, the D-Dallas 1, had a wingspan of 1.7 meters and weighed 20 kilograms. The second iteration, the D-Dallas 2, flew in 2012 and had a payload capacity of 100 kilograms. The high payload and high maneuverability made it ideal for this system to be used in cargo delivery and aerial surveillance drones. The cyclogyros saw another surge in interest in 2011 when Northwestern Polytechnic Institute in China demonstrated an untethered eVTOL model aircraft. Since then, a lot of universities and aircraft companies have developed subscale models and carried out successful flights 
with different configurations. The most exciting news regarding cyclogyros has come out from Russia's Advanced Research Foundation or ARF. They have been developing a cyclogyro with a payload capacity of 100 kilograms to 1000 kilograms. Their interest is based on military application as the cyclogyros are quieter compared to helicopters. So far, the ARF has flown a 60 kilogram prototype VTOL aircraft that is being called the cyclocar. It uses a super responsive cyclical propeller propulsion system. A full size long range six seat cyclocar is expected to fly in 2022. When completed, the cyclocar will be able to carry six people or up to 600 kilograms of cargo and travel a distance of up to 500 kilometers with speeds of up to 250 kilometers per hour thanks to a hybrid powertrain and the unconventional propulsion system. The propulsion system is aerodynamically complex, but it is quiet, compact and shielded for protection against foreign objects while enabling a very fast thrust vectoring. Its four propulsion barrels will have a diameter of 1.5 meters. The hybrid power system will be made up of a small battery pack and an IC engine generator, thus making use of the high energy density of diesel fuel. While the cyclocar may or may not come to fruition remains to be seen. There are challenges which include dealing with high vibration and centrifugal force and making blades with high bending and torsional stiffness to weight ratio and automatic flight controls. It is for these reasons that cyclogyros were not successful in the past. With modern materials and computer controls, we can revisit this technology. There are a lot of parameters that still need to be optimized such as the blade span and cord length to diameter ratio and the angle of attack at various stages of revolution etc. Note that generation of both lift and thrust in the same revolution of the cyclorotor has been demonstrated. Even with its challenges, it is an exciting area particularly for eVTOL. We will go into more developments and complete aerodynamics of the cyclogyro in a separate episode. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up. For more such content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention.